Hi guys, Google recently updated its BARD and it is not so dull anymore. But before we continue with the video, please like and subscribe. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the recent updates and how it can be a better option than ChatGPT for many of you. But before we go ahead, please don't forget to like and subscribe the video. So at the moment, if I have to highlight a, some major difference between ChatGPT and BARD, I would say... If you are looking for a full-fledged capability or other feature to upload files in different formats like PDF, Excel, CSV, etc., then BARD does not offer you anything specific to do that. Whereas ChatGPT with its paid option provides you an option which was earlier called as Code Interpreter, now it is called Advanced Data Analysis, using which you can upload files in different format. ChatGPT Premium offers you that capability and if you're looking for a free option or you're not so much into uploading files in different formats and doing some data analysis then i will say chat gpt as well as bard they are now neck to neck you can use either of them and if you are in the google ecosystem i would say bard is probably a better option and i will show you how but if you were to look at some of the recent updates i would say the bard model has been updated so the latest model is really better. Now you can evaluate the BARD response, which is a great boost for someone who use BARD or similar tools to do research, to work on formal reports, because you need some tool to authenticate, to validate the response coming out of these chatbots. A lot of time we just go ahead with the assumption that any information coming out of these chatbots is okay to use. But I would say always check if you are working on a formal report, it could be for your school, it could be for your office, but validate that information. And the last update which I want to highlight is integration with Google ecosystem like Gmail, Drive, etc. and other extensions as well. I will cover them in the video. But now that offers you a great capability where you can use BARD as a single interface and query all these tools which you are already using. So if you have a file in Drive, you don't need to open the Drive. You can directly query that, access that from BARD. If you have got email from your school or office which is there in your Gmail account, you don't need to visit or open Gmail. You can directly access it from BARD and get the relevant information which is huge because most of us use Gmail, Drive, and with this update, with this integration, I think it could be a great utility to have. So when you launch BART, you will be greeted with a new interface. You have these three cards here with ready to use prompts. I'm assuming there will be some kind of recommendation engine behind it, which will customize these prompts over a period of time as you use it more and more. But to begin with, these are the default prompts. If you don't like them, you can simply use this refresh icon and refresh it. Now we will run some of the prompts and then we will go through some of these extensions and you will see that it is really better if you used it two, three months back. It is really cool. All right, so let's continue. So you'll find your extensions here. So some of the recent updates include, like I mentioned earlier, integration with Google's ecosystem. So you have flights, hotels, maps, workspace include your drive, docs, Gmail, etc. And then, of course, we have YouTube as well. You have your settings here. So anything which you have shared so far, you can change the theme, all sorts of those things. So let's go back to our BART and see what we can do with it. So I'll show you one of a great use case, which I believe is going to add a lot of value to a lot of people. Now, if you are using ChatGPT and if you have a file, or a document. It could be related to your school work. It could be related to your personal, professional work. Point is you still need to upload the file and get the data out of it, even if you are using the paid option with ChatGPT. But Google Bard now offers you a single window, provided you are using Gmail, Drive, Docs, etc. So you can see that I just said, locate YouTube folder in my drive. So now with these extensions enabled, it can access your drive, etc. If you are just using it first time, then I will say it's better to just mention the name of the tool or application which you want to refer to, like drive or Gmail. So I just mentioned my drive. And it was intuitive enough to look into my drive. Now I had just created this YouTube folder. So maybe that's why it couldn't locate the folder itself, but it found the files which are there in that folder. 
which is a great deal now because imagine you have a bunch of documents in your drive. It could be your docs, slides, or any other documentation there. And then a bunch of emails in your Gmail account. But you need to run some analysis. You need to do some report. In that case, instead of manually going through each and every file and then analyzing it, that could be really cumbersome and that could take a lot of time. So instead, you can just ask Google or rather use BARD and access the entire ecosystem and get your things done. So here, if you see, I have this Spotify 2022 annual report. I just asked it to essentially analyze that document. I'm not opening the document. I'm not uploading the file, which is a great deal. Because remember, initially I said that with ChatGPT, you can upload file and run data analysis. Now, if you have such file in your drive or Gmail, you probably don't even need to have that capability to manually upload the file because it can automatically access it. So I just entered this prompt and it went through the document and shared the highlights, which is a great deal. If I am working on a large report, I have multiple such files to analyze. It's really a great time saver. You can just keep asking questions and it will analyze those documents and provide its feedback. And now if you look at this prompt, this is essentially again highlighting its capability to look into your emails and find relevant information. Here I'm asking it to check my emails and find information about digital transformation. And you can see that it has gone through my Gmail and highlighted these emails. And it is also giving you these results here, which is essentially to confirm the source. So it is not cooking up any information, any data on its own. Of course, it's a chatbot, so if you ask some generic question, the response will be, you can say, cooked up. But in these cases, when you are asking it to check for specific information, it's very different. It is looking into specific applications or trying to find a specific email or document. Now, if you see, the another use case is when you are planning something. So, as I have shown you earlier, now it is integrated with the hotel or the flight. So, you can use it to plan your end-to-end -end trips. And this is where it is way better than ChatGPT because of its capability into maps, hotels, and those things. So Google already had tons of data around these things. So it is not only giving me these places to, to visit, I'm also asking it to find me the flights. And then it can use its flight module, or rather extension in this case, to give me some of the options. And you can see these are the actual flights and not some randomly generated data. And then I'm using it to get the hotels in that area. And towards the end, you can see it is giving me all the maps and everything, which is great because if you're planning this trip, this could be such a lifesaver, especially if you are visiting a new place. So with this recent integration with Google's ecosystem, I think it is now much better option because now you don't have to manually look into each and every document. You don't have to, because a lot of time when we are working, it's not like you're working out of nowhere. You will have certain files, you will have certain assignments, you will have certain tasks. And this is where you can integrate everything and just use BARD as a single interface and access everything. If I show you another example or other feature which I want to highlight here. Now, if you look at this prompt, now this prompt is very relevant. Now, the question or other prompt could be different in your case. But a lot of time you use ChatGPT or BARD to get some specific information. And this is really sensitive. You need to have real data or at least valid data. Now here, if you see, it has given me an output. If I put same question in ChatGPT, I will get the response. It's not like ChatGPT will not provide me the response. And I'm using the free version. I have the paid option also, but in this case, I'm trying to compare the free versus free. So this is a prompt which is not adding much value to us, but let's say it had given us some value. In many cases, it will give you. But you won't have a way to know if that value is true or not. BARD now gives you an option to validate its response. So if you click on this G icon here, it will essentially evaluate the entire response and indicate what is based on certain sources and what is not. So in this case, you can see that these lines here, or rather these statements here, are coming from specific sources. So if I click on this, it is providing me information about the source, which is a great deal because a lot of time we just blindly copy-paste information from these chatbots with assumption that it's a real data. 
but that data may not be valid. In this case, if you're working on a report, it's a great deal to even get the information about the source. And then of course, there are additional features like you can modify it, make it more professional or casual, longer, shorter, etc. But I think this validate is a very important tool for a lot of us. And one more thing where I think BARD is really better than ChatGPT is that whatever information I have here, I can just directly add it into my Google Docs or if I need to send it to someone through email, I can use this draft in Gmail. So for now, I will just export it to Docs so that later if I have to refer to this information, this document is already there. Now, there was some problem in creating the document. Let's try again and see if it can create. Sometimes there could be some session issue, but usually it works. So by and large, I will say, if you are someone who is trying to use some chat bot out there to meet your daily needs, I think BARD is really shining and getting better and better. Now, of course, if you have certain use case where you are already accustomed to chat GPT and think that is a better option, probably you can continue. But if you are someone who is just starting out to use these tools to address their college or professional needs, I think you will do really well with Google BARD. What do you think? Thank you.